Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to a new video. So, today's a bit of a different one. Um, I'm in my car. I knew I'd be out on the road traveling a lot today, so I thought, uh, since this is going to be my office for the next kind of like two, three hours, um, I'll record a quick video for you guys. So, the topic of this one then is, um, it's like the stereotypical topic you'll see everyone do a video on, and it's why I personally see why I think people will fail their dropshipping in 2020. Um, like I said, I know everybody does a video on this topic, but it's an important topic because it's important that beginners especially know kind of like the pitfalls, the struggles they're going to go through and the the realistic expectations they should have when they're going to start a dropshipping business. So that's the topic of this one. Um, there will be a competition as well as usual for that one-to-one -one call. However, so we can get straight into the points that I've got written down on my phone. Um, we're going to jump straight into the content and then I'll announce that later on in the video. So that being said guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoy this one and uh, yeah, let's get straight into it. So point number one then is false expectations. Um, certainly a lot of people I speak to on Instagram, um, they have false expectations before they get into dropshipping, which is a bad place to be because in my opinion, it just sets you up for failure and it's through no fault of their own. Personally, I would blame it on social media it's like any industry so the fitness industry for example um, if you're into fitness and you watch people on youtube you know that like one of the most controversial topics is are people taking steroids etc and there's no kind of like true way of knowing and it's the same in dropshipping you see people post videos on youtube and the results might not always be real um and there's always those videos as well that go around that like my first month on Shopify, I did 10K, I did 100K. And I'm not saying the results aren't true all of the time because there will be some, obviously. But what I'm trying to say is that that's not normal and you shouldn't expect that to be normal because if you go into dropshipping thinking that's normal, if you don't achieve those results, then you're going to be disheartened. You're going to want to give up and you're going to see dropshipping as some business model that doesn't work when that isn't the case because 100% dropshipping works. It just doesn't work in the way that most people think it will or certainly people don't achieve the results that they think they're going to achieve as quickly as they achieve them so next time you're watching a video on youtube just take it with a pinch of salt because the results might be real but there's a reason people use certain images and thumbnails and certain titles it's because it's to get views it's marketing so it's not always 100 percent the truth or you shouldn't always perceive it for exactly what it is if that makes sense so going back to the original point then of expectations is that uh, personally, so this is my view on it as a beginner, somebody nowadays coming into dropshipping because it's completely, it's a completely different game in my opinion to when I started over three years ago now, um, just in the fact that Facebook ads are a lot more expensive. So to give you kind of like what I would perceive as good expectations to have them when you get into dropshipping is simply just to stay in business. I know it sounds like a pretty crappy goal, but in my opinion, I think that's what your goal should be in the beginning is just to budget yourself and make sure you stay in business for at least three months, if not longer, because in those three months, you're going to learn so much about running a business, cash flow in, budgeting, how Facebook ads work, how customers respond, customer expectations, customer retention. There's just so many things that you'll learn in those three months that you won't learn if you give up within the first few weeks. And when it comes to dropshipping, especially, is that Yes, it's a lot harder than what most people realize, but on the flip side of that, when you do come onto a winning product and you've got like a good few ad sets running consistently and profitably, then you can make a lot of money very, very quickly. I'm not taking away that from anyone. You can scale things very quickly. That's one of the advantages, one of the main advantages to dropshipping is the fact that you can scale things crazily quick as long as you've got the cash to do it. So to summarize this point then is that have realistic expectations. Just focus on yourself. And as long as you're learning as an individual and you're progressing week by week, then that's a success in my opinion. Don't, if you only make say 200 pounds in your first month and that's still a hundred pound loss and you see somebody else making 10 grand, don't be disheartened by it. Like it's your own journey. The main thing of doing this is to obviously increase your your way of living and to make it it's got to be enjoyable if it's not enjoyable then you shouldn't be doing it from the very beginning so don't worry about other people just make sure you stay in your own lane keep your head down focus on yourself and uh, enjoy it the next point as well which kind of follows on from what we've just spoken about is time so that's why i've tasked you with the goal or with the idea in mind to stay in business for at least three months because 
a lot of people I speak to on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook, uh, one of the main reasons why they don't succeed is because they don't give it enough time. And I think I've used this metaphor before, but a good way to think about it is getting a driving license and learning to drive. So if something was easy, then everybody would be doing it. So if not a lot of people are doing it, then it must be difficult, if that makes sense. And a good way to summarize this, to kind of illustrate this then, is learning to drive. So getting a driving license. On average, it takes about 20 to 40 hours to get a driving license. And because that's not a lot of time, then there's millions of people all around the world, probably over a billion people maybe, with a driving license that drive around on the roads. Whereas if you increase that time and made it like a formality that you had to have at least 400 hours of driving lessons before you could get your license, then that number of drivers on the road would probably drastically reduce by at least 50% in my opinion. And that's because there's more time involved. So think of it, I guess another way to think of it is that you're buying things with your time. So if you want a driving license, you buy it with your time by putting 20 to 40 hours of lessons in before you before you get to that point where you're skillful enough to have a driving license if you want to learn a bike that's going to take x amount of hours of your time if you want to become skilled at facebook ads and drop shipping again that's going to take x amount of hours of your time and the difficult thing is that I th in my opinion that people struggle with is that they don't exactly know how much time that's going to take and that is the most difficult thing because you don't know if it's going to take 20 hours 40 hours 60 hours 100 hours but the main thing is as long as you're increasing your knowledge of the business um, and you're testing with Facebook ads and when you are testing you're learning as long as your knowledge is increasing and your skill is increasing then you're always going to get to that point you just don't know when that point is actually going to come if that makes sense Moving on to the next couple of points then, those first two points were kind of like the mental side. In fact, before we get into these two points then, just to announce the one-to-one -one competition. Um, so in case you're new to my videos, in every single one I give away a free one-to-one -one call with me. So chance then for me and you to hop on a Skype call, Facebook call, Instagram, whatever it is. Um, we can have a chat about your business and I can help you out however you want it. So it can be questions about drop shipping. We can go through certain products, Facebook ads, um, whatever it is. Um, we can go through that on a call and I'll give away that in every single video. So for your weekly chance to do that, make sure you subscribe and watch my videos. And then to enter the competition, all you have to do is hit the like button just below the video and uh, leave a comment down below. In terms of the comment, just comment whatever you want. It really doesn't matter. Um, it can just be e -com, It can be a question. Um, I do respond to every single question. So if there is a question you want answering, then now is obviously... I'm a good time to answer it and then the final thing you have to do is just tune into my next video and um, where the winner will be announced so with that being said then moving on to the next couple of points so as i said then the first couple of points are kind of like the mental reasons why i see people failing and then the second two points are going to be kind of like the practical reasons and the number one thing um is originality which originality slash professionalism so a lot of people don't take dropshipping seriously and at the end of the day, dropshipping is a business and businesses need to be taken seriously. They need to be done professionally if they're going to succeed. I don't know what the true statistic is, but it's something ridiculous like 70, 80 or maybe even 90 percent of businesses go out of business within the first 12 months. And then the same again within the next kind of three years, I think it is. I don't know what it is, but it's a crazy amount of businesses fail. And that's because they don't do things to a high enough standard, to a high enough quality. And. The truth should be said for dropshipping, if not more so dropshipping, because it's an international business, which means you're not just competing with John down the road or Derek in the next town. I don't know where those names from, but you're competing with John in America and Derek in Canada because everybody's competing for that same space on Facebook. And that's why costs are increasing. So in order to succeed, then you have to do things better than everybody else. And you have to do it in an original way. I can't stress that enough that I, in fact, I task anybody watching this video to go out there and find a dropshipping business that is succeeding, that isn't using original content for their ads. Another way to look at this point on the flip side is that, yes, you've got people who are succeeding using original content. And the reason they're succeeding then and doing well is because the content they're putting out is unique. They're not doing the same as everybody else. They might even be selling the same products as everybody else, but they're doing it in an original and professional way by hiring actors. Um, I've mentioned these people numerous times. They're a great company, dropshipping company to go and look at because they are using the kind of like bog standard stereotypical dropshipping business model um, within the Shopify community, which is sourcing products from AliExpress and dropshipping them directly to their customers. They're called bluecrate.com. 
Go and look at their products, their AliExpress products that you've probably seen time and time again. And then look at their ads. It's unique quality and professional content. It's got actors in so people can see faces. It's been proven, read books, watch studies, watch YouTube videos about the psychology of buying and what people's attention is naturally drawn to. And it's drawn to emotion. So seeing people experience an emotion, happiness, joy, sadness, um, animals as well, showing joy. I Again, I task you, anybody watching this video to DM me a link to a video that's gone viral. So anything over 5 million views that hasn't got either an animal in or a human in. And I don't think you'll think, try thinking about it now, I don't think you'll be able to find anything. And it's because that's what people's attention and emotion is drawn to, is other emotion. So when it comes to creating your Facebook ads, then you have to encompass that. A good way to look at it that I've um, mentioned before is when you're trying to create content for products or even pick the products themselves is think rather than will people buy this is that will people engage with this? Will people watch this video? Will people tag somebody in this? Will somebody share this? Because we're advertising on a social media platform and we need to take advantage of the fact that we can get views for free if we can get people to share our content. And the only, the best way to get your content to go viral is by people sharing with it, people engaging with it. And the way to look at it as well is that in Facebook eyes, that's a good thing because obviously they want people to engage with their content. So if you can run an ad that people like engaging with, then Facebook ads are gonna give you better results as well. So to summarize this point then, cause I could probably talk on for hours and hours about being original and being professional. There's so many different things you can do, like budget, the amount of people I see starting a dropshipping business and I ask them what their budget is and they're just like, I don't know. You need to set yourself a budget. Is it 300 pound a month? Is it 500 pound a month? And stick to that because what that will do as well is it will stop you like just shoveling tons and tons of money into Facebook ads and seeing nothing um, and nothing back from that. If you say to yourself, right, I'm going to spend no more than £300, then it forces you to budget that correctly. And if you start to say you get halfway through that, you spent 150 quid and you've seen nothing in return, it will force you to stop spending money and look at your Facebook ad account, look at the breakdowns and think, right, I need to sort out what's going on. Otherwise, I'm going to run out of money. So to summarize this point again is that be professional. Don't rush to get your business live. Take the time to create content, buy your product, film a good ad yourself or find other videos to chop and change as long as you have the rights to them. Hire actors, send it to somebody on Fiverr, send it to an influencer. That's a really good way, by the way, to get an ad for your product. It's just an influencer using it, whether it's a makeup product. It could be literally anything and the possibilities are endless. So just be professional be proud of what you're about to sell. Be proud of what you've created and um, yeah, be original. The next point then I want to talk to you guys about, um, the final point of this video um, is customer retention. People don't focus on customer retention and longevity of a business. And they are the two key things or customer retention is kind of like the key thing to running a lot, to running a sustainable business um, in the long run. So, Going back to something I mentioned earlier on in the video is beginners getting 10K months, 20K months. Um, it's gonna sound stupid, but anybody can do that. Like anybody has can get beginner luck. Anybody can stumble across a product that just goes really well and they find the right audience. The difficult thing with dropshipping is making it sustainable and profitable for a long period of time. This is something I fell foul of when I first started is that um, if you've watched my content before, you'll know that my big breakthrough, if you like, my first winning product was like this turquoise bracelet um, and the LED dog collar. And I made a lot of money very quickly. But what I struggled with was making that profitable and sustainable for a long period of time. So basically my sales went all the way up and I thought this is awesome. And then they just started to plummet and go down because, I mean, this time of year is perfect for LED collars, but come February, March, April, where the weather starts getting warmer, starts getting lighter at day, people don't have a requirement for a product like that. So sales start to go down um, and things got pretty tight at one point. So what I'm trying to say is that have a plan, have a structure of what you're currently doing now, what you're gonna be doing in two months, four months, six months, um, break it down however you want, but just know that depending on what product you're selling, it might not always sell consistently and profitably throughout the year. And the best and easiest way to kind of 
when you do go through those patches is customer retention. If you can get somebody to spend £20 with you, £30, £40, £50 with you, and you provide a good product and good service, getting them to come back on your site and spend another £20, £30, £40, £50 is really easy to do because they already trust you. Like the biggest hurdle you'll have to overcome as somebody, as a new business, is the trust factor. People nowadays on the internet are savvy to scams. They're savvy to dodgy businesses. Um, they know the kind of things to look out for. And they're naturally wary about people with people that aren't tried and tested, people that aren't Amazon, basically. So you have to show a customer that you're trustworthy, have a phone number that they can ring, have an address, provide a good service. And once you do that, once they get over that hurdle of trusting you, getting them to come back on your site and spend more money with you will be so much easier to do. Yet it's something that so many people forget about. They're like, right, I've got that customer. I've got their email address, their contact details, etc., And then they just forget about them. They don't remarket to them on Facebook. They don't send them emails. And that is going to that's a key process to being profitable and sustainable and running a business for a long time and with that being said then guys not to make the video too long um just to give you a quick summary then so number one is have realistic expectations like focus on yourself don't get too distracted by these success stories on youtube that are like i made 10k in my first month um because it might not be real and even if it is real the People who win at dropshipping win in the long run. People who can run a business for 12 months, not just one month. Number two is um, time. Give it time. Like I said, make your primary goal when you first start to stay in business for at least three months, purely because the things you're going to learn in those three months will benefit you in the long run. Plus, the majority of the majority of people I speak to won't run ads for longer than a month. And if they don't see a result, then they'll just give up. So if you can stay in business for three months, then that's so much more experience, time, money that you have invested into dropshipping that puts you kind of like ahead of those people, which gives you a better chance of success. So there's the two mental points then that we spoke about. The two practical points we spoke about just to summarize is number one, be professional slash original. Produce something that you're proud in that you can see yourself doing for a long time. The last thing again that you want to do is get like five years down the road or even two years, three years down the road and think, like, damn, I, I don't like this business. I'm not enjoying this because then you'll have to find something else and um, you just don't want to be in that position. And then the final point as well that I mentioned was customer retention and profitability slash sustainability don't focus on other people if they get good results for one month even if you get good results yourself for one month the hardest thing is staying profitable for a long period of time so focus on customer retention if you already have acquired a customer focus on what you can be doing to bring that customer back onto your site and um, to spend more money and even better yet bring their friends back onto your site to spend more money and um, that being said then guys that wraps up the video i hope you enjoyed this one let me know what you think to the format um hopefully the audio quality is good i haven't got a clue until i get home and edit this um and yeah if you're still watching thank you very much i really do appreciate the support the way things are going i think we're going to hit like 10k subs maybe the first week of december which is just it would be absolutely awesome if we could so if you haven't subscribed yet for weekly content please do um if you enjoyed the video obviously hit that like button and obviously, if you want that chance to win the one-to-one -one call with me, uh, make sure you leave a comment down below. With that being said, then guys, let's get into announcing the winner of the previous video. What's up, guys? So I hope you enjoyed that video in my car. Um, let me know what you think to that kind of format and style of video, whether you like it or not. Um, I am traveling a lot recently, in fact, so there is more opportunities to produce videos like that. So if you do enjoy them or if you don't enjoy them, make sure you let me know either way in the comments below. Anyway, here we are in the previous video. Let's get straight into announcing the winner. Take your URL. Paste it in there, get the YouTube comments, 29 unique comments in a day, which is awesome. So thank you very much. Um, and the winner of the previous video then is Yashesh. So thank you very much for your comment. Hit me up on Instagram. We can get a call arranged. And guys, if you just want to get straight out of business and book a call right away, you can actually do so. Um, just check out the links in the video description below. And that being said, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully seeing you next one too. Cheers.